It's a time for the package from China. Let's enter the Pandora jungle. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I want to take a close look at the Pandora RRTV or double RTV, how you want to pronounce it. It comes with a new version Pandora's box, but also the casing is basically the next generation of portable Pandoras. It's almost a very awesome and interesting features, but is the Pandora box inside good? And how is the quality in general? The box itself is quite big, but also very slim. So let's do a quick unboxing and let's see what we're going to get in the inside. So basically this is how I received the product itself. It comes with a cardboard outer box and inside we're going to get Sterofoam. Of course here we're going to get the system itself and a lot of extra goodies. In the compartment over here we're going to get the power supply. It's a 12 volt. I think it's a 2 or 3 amp. Oh, it's a, it's a 5 amp. So that's a quite heavy one compared with the normal ones we're going to get. Then we're going to get a European plug. Take consideration if you're ordering one, you'll also get with the right cable. We're going to get the fake really horrible, oh man, the cheap to the cheap cheap PlayStation 2 knockoffs. Then we're having here a very long HDMI cable because we can hook this up to a television. Some spare buttons and gives us a great indication how the control will be. And I can say like there's really cheap long travel buttons. I must say that I'm not very pleased with these things. And then of course we're going to get the ball top. And the reason why, because we do 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 I need a minor assembly. So this is a full metal case design. And the thing is quite heavy for a portable device. But let's do a quick overview of all the features we're going to get. So at the front we're going to get the system to close it up. I'm very glad they did that because otherwise it will always be a little bit open, which you can see over here. Then we're going to get the option to put the bolt up in here, so it makes it more portable. Quite an interesting option, but we have seen it before. But with the previous models, you use the ball top to lock the system and they changed this one out. At the right side, we're going to get an extra connector. They are selling the arcade, let's say, extra joystick separately, so you can connect it to player two and some ventilation holes over here. At the back, we're going to get the input for the power supply. And also over here, we're going to get the option for the power supply. Then we're going to get options like HDMI out, VGA out, audio out, volume control, setting button, and the two USB for the controller. But it seems to be like we're having an option to maybe upgrade the Pandora box in the future. But we need to open it up to see if it's possible, if it's exactly the same boards that we've seen before. Okay, so what you're going to get at the bottom part is this gigantic hole. So if you need to tighten up the joystick with assembly, you can basically tighten it up with a flat screwdriver. And over here, we're going to get the compartment because we can use batteries inside and make this thing really portable. They are using the 80, 100, 650, 3.6 volt batteries. Take consideration these batteries are like you're having so many different versions, especially when it comes to the connector. You can see here at the top, we're going to get a different one and it fits in perfectly. We got three of them, gives us a couple of hours of playtime if they are fully charged. All right, so let's take a close look at the device and assemble the joystick. So opening up, I really like the layer itself. There will be different models in the future. I completely forgot to show you this, the dust cover that we need to put on. Then let's screw in the bolt up. We need to tighten them up, but then we're ready to go. I personally really love the casing itself and how it looks and the finishing touch. It's all black painted, but what I do like about it, it's a little more slim and it sounds kind of weird to say, but the previous model was more bulky and it was not really comfortable because you were putting your hands quite high. But in overall, I think this product is way more comfy to play than the previous models I've reviewed here on the channel. But let's take a close look at the layout. They also changed some things out. To begin with, we're going to get an eight button layout. The joystick, it doesn't have like a very nice spring to it. It's comparable with the Senwa, but it's more like a cheap wiggle edition compared with Senwa. Then we're going to get all the buttons we're going to need for starting, going back to the main menu and the pause. It's kind of weird that we're having basically two buttons, but sometimes they are basically giving this a different function. We're having the option to put the LEDs on and off. That is pretty cool in my opinion. And then we're going to get here and display for how full or how empty, depends how you look at it, the batteries are. Okay, so the quality control was not the greatest because you can see like everything was completely messed up. Like this is what it came out, out of the box. 
So, and also the display itself is really filthy. So I'm hoping I can clean it up. And if I can't get the plastic loose, the only thing I can do is like unscrew the bezel over here and just try to lift the bezel out and remove the freaking plastic. Hmm. And it looks kind of weird, so I'm hoping I can clean it up. So after removing, I noticed there is a scratch over there. And it will not be noticeable when you're booting up the LCD display. But I can tell you, like, when it comes to the quality control, and you're paying a lot of money for a device like this, that pisses me off. Alright, so I'm having this special cleaning for LCD monitors, and I'm hoping I can fix it up. Because I don't know what it was, or if it was like something like glue, but it looked really messed up. And it would be like a big shame. And don't get me wrong, like when you're turning it on, you don't see it any all, not at all, but I just want to have it clean. But yeah, that is what we call quality control, my ass. Okay guys, so it's clean, so we can go further with review. Oh boy, but the scratch is such a bummer. Ah, making me crazy. Another thing I really like are the hinges over here. They look very durable and they look like really nice quality. And like these things weren't on the previous models. They're still having like the flat cable that goes through here. But it seems to me like they did a way better job like with the previous one because the other one was basically like double folding. And yeah, that's something I always need to take into consideration. For me, like I understand they use this option because of the LCD displays out of the factory. But oh boy, it always scares me a little bit. If it gets broken, you're going to have a problem. When the system has been booted up, I just wanted to show you the LED function. It's nothing really fancy, it's just like some LEDs beneath it. But you can turn it off if you don't want to use it. Over here we can see the indication of the battery. So I'm guessing when I unplug it now, you can see it still has two stripes over here. So it seems to be working just fine. But I just wanted to show you, otherwise maybe you don't believe me. No, just kidding of course. But always when I'm turning the system off, I'm hearing this weird sound at the bottom from the speaker. What the hell is that? But I want to give you a look at the LCD display. And what I'm noticing when you sit in front of it, it looks amazing. But when you're getting a different view angle, you can already see it. It washes out. And that means that there is not an IPS panel in this. A little bit of a bummer because most of these portable devices are quite expensive and if you're paying a lot of money for it, at least an IPS panel is a must-have nowadays. But okay, I can live with it for now, but let me know in the comments what you think of this. Well, let's take a close look at the all-new Pandora 28S Pro RRTV model. What is the specs of the mainboard that we're going to take a close look at it later, but also what can we even play with this? Because the menu itself looks very similar for the products I have reviewed before. Over here we're going to get four different lists. Here we're going to get the all lists. Then we're pressing start, we go back to the top over here. Then we're going to get category. Here we can see what kind of different system we can play. And the first thing I'm noticing when I'm checking out the different models of Pandora I've reviewed, you don't see any, let's say, PlayStation Portable. So they basically left a lot of different systems out. And a little bit of bummer, so no Sega Dreamcast or Sega Naomi. And yeah, 8-bit, 6-bit will run just fine, but they also again messed it up with the icons over here. Oh boy, nothing to do with Xbox 360. Then we go to the recent list, and of course pressing start also brings you to the search engine. So let's talk about the settings. Maybe here is something new. Auto oh, image optimization set to HD, new. Disable please. Language, enter game settings. If you check this out, you can see we have some things that we can change. Like we can edit the favorite list, the game list. We can even delete a game if you want to. And games would be a pain in the butt simply because most of these systems are locked down. Then we're having burst settings disable and factory data reset. Yeah, so in my opinion, there's not a lot of new things going on here. It's more of the same stuff like all the other models I've reviewed. So quick load and quick save. This option is quite interesting, but it doesn't work with the PlayStation 1 and some meme emulators. Just wanted to point it out. They didn't fix the issue. Don't know why this is, but seems to be they don't give a shit. Alright, so let's play a part of Tekken 3. The reason I booted up this system particularly is because there is no high-end stuff on it. No PSP, no Dreamcast, no Sega Nomi whatsoever. But I noticed this game lags. Yep. 
seriously, like, I noticed some minor slowdowns here and there. It's especially noticeable in the audio. They managed to map the buttons right this time. And that's also the reason I just picked out PlayStation 1, because it's a very high demanding system for, let's say, low-end boards. It makes me wonder, like, which main board will run this device? Hmm. And the thing I wanted to try out is if it still has the same emulator running at the background, and yep, it does, it still got the issues. Saber Wolf! Let's see how the backgrounds look. Oh, you can just hear it. It's stutter. So with N64, it's always the same issue, like, they are using very old emulators and it's not running N64 at all. So, I was thinking, let's try a 60-bit game, just to see for fun how it works. Do you see that? Do you hear that? Like a couple of minutes delay. Even the freaking Sega Mega Drive I was searching the button. So the music itself, it's okay, but just the sound effects are completely messed up. Oh boy. And here you can see we can have a quick load, quick save. Okay, so that makes me wonder if I'm grabbing an other system, two dimensional, let's say in 60 bit, like this. Will it have the same issue? Oh my gee, yep, it does. It has a freaking awful delay in it. And it makes you wonder, like, did it, didn't they even test this, this version out? Or what, what is going on here? Like, it's a brand new edition, but it has so many issues that we didn't even have with the previous models. Okay, but that makes me also wonder, can we open it up and replace the Pandora's box and upgrade it in the future? So, we have basically four holes over here with some screws that holding, I'm guessing, the control panel in one place. So we need to remove them, don't need to drop them, and let's see what we're going to find in the inside. Alright, so the screws have been removed. Let's see if we can pull it out. Yep. So that's basically the thing that it hold, holds all parts in place. So you can see like it's a very thick acrylic plate and if you want to place the button it can be done very easy. There's not a lot of movement so we need to pull out some cables so we have some more free space around here. Oh man they tie wrapped everything but there's not a problem we can now show the main board itself. Okay so let's take a close look in the inside. Here at the left we're going to find the Pandora's box where all the magic happens but there is positive and the negative thing going on. So here you can see the controller board over here that connects the flat cable to the monitor. So if this thing gets broken you can replace it. Another thing over here is the cable that is for the signal itself and that goes straight in here the Pandora's box. And what is so convenient with this, I have seen some better main boards out there that have the option to replace this. So even this board is really shitty, I'm hoping the Pandora team can make like an update for this, but if it is not then we need to replace it, but I have a main board, so I basically can fix this. Over here we're going to get the connection for the IDA, or the EDA, how do you pronounce that? But in the end this is like an old school connection, plug and play, and this is basically what we're going to get. The cheap LED strip over here, then we're going to get the PCB, that is basically like laying loose. That is for the battery compartment, and there we're going to get a very tiny 5 watt speaker. It's a little bit of a bummer because we needed some more juice for better audio quality. My camera doesn't zoom! Ah. So when it comes to replacing buttons, it's easy peasy. And the reason why, just push this lever in, push the button out and that's it. You can reconnect the two cables and you can just replace the button, it's super easy. The joystick, it's indeed like a in chip to the chip chip semi clone. But what you're going to get is just a basic connection so you can replace it with a better one. So replacing the buttons will be fairly easy, but I wish they added a Samba kit in this. That would be such a better experience and of course not the crappy freaking Pandora's box. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the weight itself. Let's see if my scale can handle it. So in total this thing weighs around 2.3 kilograms. 
No, my weight doesn't like it. It's too heavy for him. What I don't get about this product, besides the quality, co the quality controller was just like shit, but I don't get it. Like this casing is very cool. The display is maybe not an IPS, but it looks nice. And beside that point, so when you're looking at the way how they made this, give it a slightly different angle so that it gives it a way more comfortable to play compared, especially with the older ones. This system has so much potential, but they just completely messed it up if you ask me when it comes to the power and the emulation performance because it's like rubbish. But it's clear to me that they just need to change the main board, fix all of the issues. I don't know where this is coming from because it is a brand new model. They changed the main board, the specs, etc. But in the end, they are giving us like a better or better set of worse product when you're looking at the previous models. But I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family and let me know what you think of this. I'm hoping in the future they will like giving a better main board in this because in my opinion, this makes this product just pretty pointless in many different ways. And I will see you in the next video.